Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first wish all the best to the president of the chamber, Nicolas Bacatelos, and all those who have their name day today, Nicolas and Mike. I have the great joy with my colleague, Yanis Stavropoulos, who is a lawyer and head of the AMCHEM uh, GR Taxation Committee, to coordinate a discussion with the Minister of Justice, uh, Mr. Kostas Tiaras, and the Secretary General for the Coordination of the Government, Mr. Thanas Kadoyoris. I belong uh, in the category of the so-called uh, um, active, in action lawyers, a barrister in other words. I will very quickly refer to a case which demonstrates all the problems faced by Greek justice. In 2007, I was informed by a, 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 a customer, a, a company which is our client, on a, a hold that they found out in their books. We made an internal audit and realized that there was a specific person in the accounting department that would receive a client's checks through which he would pay the commodities paid by purchased by the company. Certain checks, however, would appear and would be checked in by herself, the clerk, that is, the the employee in her personal account. So we accumulated all data. We uh, presented the appeal, which uh, we uh, filed a lawsuit in the prosecution office in May of 2008. Yesterday, December of 2022, I uh, the case was heard uh, in the um, plenary session of uh, the appeals court. Fifteen years later, that case lasted two days. Yesterday was the second hearing day. And when we reached 2 and f- two five p.m., when the prosecutor had already suggested the guilt of the employee because the guilt was proven, I asked from the chair of uh, the court to give us also the floor and complete the process. You know that the time table would be until 3 o'clock so as to complete the whole procedure. And then I had someone from the audience by the chair of uh, the judge, that is, who retorted, when do you expect us to read the case? The, the jury, the, the the court will adjourn, and then you'll come back because uh, the judges have to make the judgment. That is 15 years later on a case which is a characteristic example of two problems faced in the Greek uh, Hellenic, in the Hellenic uh, justice system, a great delay and a lack of quality because we can't hear publicly in the court a judge in a five-member um, offense judge when we might have incarceration against uh, the defendant to declare publicly that she hadn't read the cases yet, 15 years later. That is, she ruled, she gave two days to hear, examine um, um, testimonies and read uh, the documents, and just before the ruling, she admitted that she hadn't really studied the case. The file, that is. This is the quintessential, actually, the quintessence of the Greek uh, judicial system. So let us see what has happened and whether eventually the can, solutions can be found. So before starting the questions, let me give the floor to Mr. Stavropoulos for his introduction, and then we will proceed with the discussion. Good morning. Again, I wish all the best to those who have their name day today. It is also my joy to participate in this discussion with uh, 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 having as guest uh, the Minister of of Justice, who has also uh, bestowed us the order to to participate in other uh, events uh, organized uh, by the AMCHA, and Mr. Thanasko Doyoris, who is a colleague uh, 
besides being Secretary General in the presence of the government. And we also have uh, joint uh, experiences during the Ani di Piombo, this uh, bad years uh, of the consultations and negotiations of uh, the MOUs when he was then a special advisor to the Minister of uh, Finance. And we were given the opportunity to discuss uh, the Hellenic justice as it sta currently stands. I'm a lawyer, mainly specialized uh, on administrative law and actually more specifically tax law. So this is uh, the picture I've got. I will make an optimistic comment at the beginning, and I leave the pessimistic comment for later. The reality is that in administrative justice, uh, numbers thrive indeed over the last decade from uh, 20 a leave 2011, even before the MOUs, an overall effort was made for the reduction of those administrative trials in front of the courts. In 2012, there were half a million cases that were still pending. Today, they are less than 200,000 cases. Now, as far as tax cases are concerned, From an exaggerated number of 160,000 pending cases, today we have less than 30. So numbers are thriving. It rests uh, to see whether the effectiveness and performance of the system also uh, is uh, doing as well. So it's something to be discussed. Well, contrary to you, Yanis, from the side of political justice, I can tell you that in the 22 years that I have been a barrister, I've never seen this acceleration, despite the many uh, transformations and reforms that uh, ministers have um, introduced. For instance, a case of a trade litigation for an invoice of 100,000 euros, it needed two years to be ruled at the first instance and another two years for a second degree. This has not changed. A lot has changed in uh, jurisprudence yet and the case law, yet uh, the pace remains the same. So let us now give the floor to the minister for the first question. So you, Mr. Minister, after uh, three and a half years uh, in your appearance uh, in the ministry, although you are not a lawyer yourself, but having fully understood how this system operates, are you satisfied from the speed of uh, rulings. What have you seen and identified during these three and a half years? What were the measures uh, taken by the own ministry for an acceleration? And I would like also your view on the mentality of the judges. I mean by that, do the judges realize that they're also part of the problem? First of all, I think that no one has to hide behind one's figure and not to agree that the biggest ailment currently in the Greek uh, judicial system is the time, the delays and postponements. Of course, I start by opening a big parenthesis. If we view what happens in most uh, European judicial systems, we'll have a similar uh, observation. Let us not fool ourselves. There's a, a general ailment in the process and operation of the judicial system. Nevertheless, in a democratic uh, state of the 21st century, no matter what the state is, we cannot have such uh, cases. Such an event that starts in 2007, it's inconceivable to have in 2022 what you just mentioned. And this, I believe, is actually the substance of the current problem. That's the, that's the stark reality. So one should view what happens in the field of justice at large. What are the procedures? What is the overall mindset? And how could, might eventually intervene? Because in this uh, broad discussion, public discussion, the public debate, there are issues that we do not bear into consideration when we want to present a view. And I explain myself. Justice at large, as a concept, philosophy, space, and as a uh, constitutionally enshrined operation, has specific axes upon which it is based. One of these axes are the people, that is, the judges, 
all the assistance prosecutors uh, and clerks. And the other access is legislation, that is the codes. And this uh, whole corpus of uh, legislation that sets the rules. And the third pillar is the infrastructure, networks, buildings, and so forth. I believe it would have been very easy for us to start from the, the two latter, because as you realize, we might very easily and with a, a very brief reformation give the opportunity to the Greek uh, judicial court to make its own steps. And how could that happen? And this replies to your question, what we did in these three and a half years. So we changed, radically changed all the codes. Why did we do that? Because codes uh, is the god spell for the operation of justice. So we changed the penal code. Suffice to say, I don't have to analyze why we did that, but we changed the, the code, of the penal code. There were, however, many dispositions there on the speeding up, and for the first time, we introduced pilot trial. You know, there was a very successful institution for more than 10 years, from 2011, if I'm not mistaken, in the state court. We brought in this pilot uh, uh, pilot case also in all courts, so for similar cases to be ruled with one single hearing so as to facilitate with this kind of integration of cases. We changed the case law of the um, state court, introducing through a one disposition. Thus, we currently have a single legal document which seems to perform. The auditor's court uh, operates far more quickly, expand, uh, with the exception of some pending issues that regard the so-called personal uh, difference on pension schemes. I believe that the court of auditors in uh, relation to its uh, past tradition is far better today. We also changed the code uh, of judicial uh, employees and gave the opportunity for this uh, uh, person, this role to uh, operate accordingly and we restructured the National uh, Academy for Judges and for the first time we offered the opportunity of the so called uh, obligatory additional training. You realize that the changes have changed since uh, the inception of the academy. Uh, 27 years have gone by. We had modernized that academy and adapted to a social uh, reality that brings new issues. For instance, in 1995, the justice would not get involved with specific tax issues or with specific environmental issues that are appearing all the more uh, often lately. And I also believe that this way we managed to conclude with a code with the major modernizing uh, cycle of the case law introducing the alternative litigation settlements. We first adopted a new law on uh, mediation, which seems to be successful. That is, the rate uh, of cases that are introduced vis-a-vis -vis the success rate is quite uh, optimistic. The point is, of course, to be able to have it even more introduced in cooperation with the global uh, mediation, trade mediation, that will be introduced in this January so as to, f to close the issue of uh, out-of-court settlement. And so along with the great progress and the fact that to a great extent we avoid costs psychological and, finan and financial, of course, uh, we alleviate the burden of work, of the workflow. And the, the part of premises, you know, that we have run the biggest digital program in justice that was ever introduced. Therefore, today, we are immediately before the completion of major projects, the extension of uh, GDP that regards all the courts in the country, with the exception of the big four ones, that already in the first stage, that is the courts of Athens, Thessaloniki, Chalkida, and Pyrrhus, and we have introduced 
lot of digital innovations with uh, the electronic uh, list of cases so it's for someone to monitor when his case is to be had. We already issue a lot of uh, e-certificates uh, and documents and soon we will be presenting the so-called remote trials, remote cases, especially for remote areas. This regards mainly those who have to be called uh, as uh, witnesses in various cases. You realize that the, the steps m- made lately in a combination with a digital program of the Court of Auditors uh, close a big uh, cycle of reforms. And for the first time, we have the, introduced the biggest building program with the construction of seven new courts in Kilkis, Ceres, Edessa, Volos, Lamia, and Heraklion, and Hania, with uh, the also uh, construction of a new first instance uh, court. A new building of 50,000 square meters will be built immediately behind the second distance court, you realize that it's not such a not great honor for us, the current situation of buildings. And we are at the last stage of the international coffer tender for the uh, purchase of a court in Piraeus. All this demonstrates that important uh, uh, developments have been introduced over the last uh, three and a half years. But what is the critical factor in uh, justice serving, no matter what the reforms, no matter how uh, we change legislation or develop digitization, no matter how many buildings, the critical and decisive factor is the people. You know that. Therefore, for the with the first code, we have introduced specific uh, objective criteria in judges' assessment. And this uh, will be the step that we will launch uh, the evaluation of judges and dealing with all the problems in the judicial system. And all the cases that you raised uh, in concluding your basic question will be dealt with because it would not have done otherwise with obligatory postgraduate uh, trainings from the Academy of Judges with uh, objective criteria where postponements, uh, eventually delays, and the quality of all the um, rulings of each judge, this will become objective criteria for evaluating judges. If you will ask me what would be the time frame for completing those uh, reforms, because we can't do it overnight, of course, this is a multifactorial process. And it can't be done overnight. So I would say that on the basis of the fact that from this judicial year, we have launched the new procedure of uh, judges' inspection, which will last two years. So the first results, the first outcome would be at the end of 2024. You realize that we need approximately two to three years. I believe that by the end of 2025, Of course, no one can know when one would be in 2025. We'll have to be frank. But I personally believe that by 2025, we will be witnessing a different judicial system at another level, with a greater velocity, with processes that we will be fully modernized and give the opportunity to Greek citizens as well to regain the trust to the operation of the judicial system. We will have done what we should have done at a given moment. Well, it was very interesting what you said, Mr. Minister, and more specifically some of the measures that I already know personally, that is this pilot case, because it has been used in administrative courts for some time now. It is indeed a very innovative measure and greatly facilitates the acceleration of the procedure. We wish every success for the political trial as well. Let me address the Secretary General now. We've heard of all those initiatives, which are really very uh, important. What do you plan for the immediate future at the level of uh, judicial system? And how is that linked uh, with the funding from the RRF? Thank you for the invitation. As Yanis Avropos said, I wear a double hat uh, in this meeting, 
as a member of the cabinet, but also my 20-year experience from courts in law at, la- uh, at large. I am glad for discussing such an issue, which has been is not only topical, but also has been long-standing, because all the factors involved in justice, and this includes politicians, judicial system, judges, uh, lawyers, ourselves, and public administration, a lot of efforts have been made, but at the same time, we've got contrasting opposite forces. So this long-standing problem, the daily experience of the citizen and the companies, which is not the best, the need for modernization, but also the fact that we should not ignore that all, with no exception, the recommendations of international organizations vis-a-vis the indices for the development show and demonstrate the justice as one of uh, the fields that must be fully rehabilitated, revamped led us to have a separate sector. When we see, when we speak of RRF, it's not merely a funding instrument as we might have it in mind. Of course, we secured 700 million euros for infrastructure that you mentioned for training, but we also wanted to include also reforms that are connected with the disbursement of those funds so as to have the self uh, uh, commitment of the greek state not a government but beyond one electoral mandate that some things will be done and before coming to the basic reform for me, as far as I'm concerned, which is related with the RRF, which is the restructuring of the judge, uh, of the judicial map. Let me say a couple of things that are currently connected with this reform vis-a-vis what we have at hand. And those of you who are from companies, you know that we'll be having hundreds of calls for tenders for the, in the next nine months so as to quickly absorb the resources from the RRF. And we examine ways such as to have only one stage of the appeals examination, at least for some projects that will be integrated in the fund, so as to broaden perhaps the fees, but not uh, creating problems of uh, in the competition or the eventual creation of cartels, but also have a kind of point system which may have arbitrary appeals to impede competition so as to accelerate the whole process. So let me come here to what you've asked about the RRF, restructuring of the judicial map, because for me personally and the government, the immediate future is of paramount importance. First and most importantly, this is the most important and difficult reform. Most important because it uh, consolidates the main reformative goals for the immediate future, digitization, human resources, rational breakdown, how many judges, how many courts, how many clerks, and all that in a coordinated and rational way. Second, it's more difficult because the agencies who have led to the problems are deeply rooted. Obviously, political uh, forces, clientelism, corporatism, all these have led to such phenomena to have that is currently 63 first instance courts and nine second instance courts, no, 12, 14. 14 second instance courts scattered all over the country. For instance, in Germany, with 80 million inhabitants, they have only 20 second instance, and the Netherlands have got five taking into consideration, of course, the geographic disparities. But in public administration as well, the first and second instance courts are definitely above the uh, European average. Whenever there was a problem, there was an increase of cases in administrative court, we would establish a new court. Of course, this has huge irrationalism in its organization. So through the new map that which is currently planned and will be implemented from 2024, we introduce specific indices so as to control the flow of cases to know where we need judges, where we need more clerks, how we should proceed with this flow, and to know if need be to make some mergers or changes in the judicial map of the country. Let us not forget 
that to a large extent uh, this map was established because it served the communication, the road network, technology had not uh, progressed, but this has changed. So for us, in the immediate future, I would say that restructuring, review of uh, the judicial map is uh, of decisive importance. Thank you. Mr. Minister, let us come back to the uh, language of figures. I would like uh, your side, taking data from the side of the Ministry of Justice, which is very well informed and very consistent on the evolution of the pending cases. Uh, we see that uh, in the state court, the department uh, judging the tax cases pending are 3,500. The department, however, does not have more than 35 judges. So each judge, as a rapporteur, if we take the ratio, has 110, 115 cases per year. As you realize, this huge bulk of work cannot be dealt with. No one can really respond no one would uh, be able to respond anyway. So how do you estimate the whole thing? I give you this uh, as a piece of information to see how you view things and how we are to solve such a problem. If you come to the last uh, target, you realize because they are all accessible. On uh, December 12, the specific department on tax cases had 112 cases in the docket. Only 12 were uh, heard, and this is a good number, actually. So only 10% of the cases. So I give you an overall picture, which I believe it's useful, and you know it, and it's most useful for your uh, concern. The point is, when it comes to justice, things are not exactly as they uh, look to be, because every case is spe special. It's not a matter of figures or the number of cases pending. For instance, uh, how figures, numbers would mean a lot uh, in specific cases. For instance, when we have the Catelli's law, in which we had uh, the ideal or the optimum number of cases that every uh, magistrate of peace could handle per year, so we can have a benchmark. It will take us this amount of time, this number of uh, magistrates to take care of the cases. And I'm saying that in order to complement what you just said before your question. Imagine that Pending cases under the law, under the Catelli's law introduced in 2014 and 2015 in our courts would get a day of hearing, especially in specific courts of peace or district courts, uh, for 2029, 20, 2030, 2031. What kind of justice, what kind of system are we talking about? And I'm not talking about a process that went through the first instance, then went to the Court of Appeal, uh, given the specific deadlines and the delays that are provided for. No, we're talking about very specific procedures. So let me open up on this parenthesis. Uh, we promulgated a law according to which by June in the com of the coming year, 2023, we will have cleared and completed 49,000 pending cases. Of course, there has been uh, some discussion, some debate. There has been some uh, reaction by the opposition parties in the parliament. They have a viewpoint according to which this cannot be done uh, in the context of the constitutional laws, although this wasn't the case because we had uh, the opinion by uh, the Supreme Court's uh, uh, plenary. And as you can see, we can intervene very in a very specific ways in order to discharge or to take the burden off the judicial system. What matters a lot is to have a specific tool, a specific procedure in our hands so we can check whether the justice, given its rate of, or its speed, is able to uh, meet with the expectations and the requirements. That's why in our Ministry of Justice we have a statistics agency so we have accurate, precise uh, statistical data for every judge, for every court, uh, for, every, for every unit, if you like, so we can extract conclusions out of this data to help us promote further uh, new reforms. Uh, 
the way justice operates is not that standardized. We have to be uh, sincere and frank. We're not talking about the same type of cases dealt with in the same way uh, involving different uh, uh, people. Uh, people. Uh, and that's the problem. So let me repeat myself. We have to introduce a general mindset uh, that it's been established with a new regulation for the state of uh, uh, court clerics and magistrates, with the new procedures as provided in the judicial uh, code. And thanks to all the provisions we have introduced, for instance, lawyers can get no more than one uh, single uh, deferral of the case uh, for their own personal reasons. Or someone who's do who doesn't attend as a witness, then he or she has to pay an increased fine when he f or she finally comes. Uh, because sometimes this means a delay in the procedure. And uh, sometimes when you take, uh, take the extract of a, re of a, of a ruling, uh, you can stop the procedure if there's no point in moving forward with it. Uh, the point is, the, the point of this is to, in, to include all these interventions under a specific umbrella, a specific mind, mindset, and get the judicial system in the mindset of uh, being administered fastly. You mentioned uh, the administrative courts. Indeed. We used to have more than 2,000 days of delay for uh, a case to be completed. Currently, this was dropped to 650 days. That was an achievement, right? It remains to be seen also in civil courts, right? Because we have two parallel procedures that are currently evolving. I repeat, we have to integrate all these interventions into the same context, to the same framework of strategy, of uh, strategic framework. And as Mr. Kodoyoki said, the um, redesigning our judicial map will help us. And I think we're in the, uh, we are uh, taking steps forward. Reforms are taking place. We are looking forward to the results. Let me ask something uh, to the Secretary General um, for the coordination of the government. We live in an era in which technology evolves really fast. New, new solutions, new applications, new services. Uh, these um, instruments uh, become part of our daily lives more and more. Do you feel that Greek? Magistrates and Greek judges are able to catch up with that, and they fully understand what this evolution is about. And especially when there is a case re related to these avant-garde issues, how well do you think he or she has understood the evolution of technology itself, so that the magistrate himself or herself may administer justice? In a nutshell, let me link that to the previous comment: the redesign of our judicial map. What are the judges? What are the clerks, etc.? Let me put aside the school of uh, judicial police or judicial clerks. These are very important initiatives by the ministry that will support the work of our judges. Let's talk about the judges themselves. Following the changes already introduced, uh, we have uh, in the National School of Judges, we have uh, uh, new courses, protection of personal data, new technologies, energy, environment, digital and soft skills. And let me go come back to that because for me it's very, very important. And as the minister said, there will be a mandatory uh, post, uh, post vocational training so that the magistrates currently in service will be able to meet the expectations. And this will also be a criterion for their assessment and promotion. There's a very important reform which will start delivering after two uh, judicial years because we will now have the judges feeling the pressure by this um, inspection of judges or assessment of judges. For me, the most important thing, administration and uh, the, 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 actually, let me put it in other words, many judges in their lifetime will be asked either to run a bigger court or a smaller court or a unit or a formation of, uh, uh, of courts. So they will have to have the administrative adequacy, which hasn't been part of their curriculum in the past, in order to say, OK, these are the cases at hand. They should be appointed to this or that judge. Who is the right judge to, try to, to hear this case? Uh, to try this case. Uh, maybe this colleague of ours is in a different, difficult state. Uh, let's pick someone else. This calls for some administrative adequacy, plus the skill to properly evaluate the data you get for your court. The minister said before that 
we had to to uh, manage the Cacelli's law cases, but we didn't know the number of these cases when we took office. It took us uh, a lot of effort to find out the ac- uh, accurate figure, uh, the number of these cases. So thanks to the statistical agency, we will be able to support both the redesign of the judicial map and support our judges because those who are experienced know what I'm talking about. If a good judge takes on a case, you've got to get a good uh, ruling and so on and so forth. So, training, post-training, new rules, and the fact that we link that with the judge's uh, uh, evolution and promotion makes it obligatory for those who even they don't want that, they will have to follow this course. So, ending, because I understand that we don't have much time. One comment. After a specific course uh, in the Greek just justice system. Let me say that uh, we all have our share of responsibility for the delayed administration of justice. The state, the lawyers, ourselves, of course, there's no doubt. You just have to attend a criminal case being tried, and uh, you can see how easy it is for us to defer a case. And, and of course, there is a share of responsibility for judicial clerks. You tabled uh, a bill the other day for the recruitment of new secretary, secretaries. Currently, we have a ratio of one to one between judges and secretaries. Your intention is to have a rate of a ratio of one to three. This has been a long-standing uh, demand by the judicial system in order to support the work. Yesterday, uh, judicial clerks uh, had uh, went on a strike. Actually, they stopped working for a few hours. They don't they don't agree with the way this recruitment of new people will be uh, will take place. So we all have a shared responsibility, and sometimes we have to change our mindset. And if not, you have to. Uh, as to, to, to enforce that. Uh, otherwise, it will take three or four generations for the mindset to change. Otherwise, there will be no reforms uh, delivering uh, swiftly and there will be no change in the administration of justice. Yanis, a couple of words. Yes, one brief comment. I totally agree uh, about the shared responsibility and with what the minister said. Administration of justice uh, is a very a um, multi-level uh, mental process and you can't get automatically certain results. We have to hear what you said, dear Minister, ab- uh, about the international uh, trade arbit- commercial arbitration. So perhaps in the world of civil justice, we can introduce alternative ways of dispute resolution like arbitration. administrative arbitration or any other uh, tax uh, arbitration. And I think we have the prerequisites in order to create such a framework. We'd like to thank you for your contribution. Thank you for uh, listening to what we just said and, of course, for accepting our invitation. Thank you very, very much.